Hello, my name is Nate. Welcome to my fluid art channel. I am going to do something today on my channel I have never done before, and that is attempt to redo uh, a, a piece. Um, this is one of my favorite things I have ever painted, and a, a lovely couple, uh, as soon as I premiered this, I think it was in February, I posted it on Instagram um, and did the video, and um, uh, I, a lovely couple messaged me immediately that they wanted it. Um, uh, they purchased it from me. I let it cure. I patched it up like I always did, shipped it off to them. And when they received it, look at this. There's a huge hole now in, <laughs> in this canvas. And it kind of breaks my heart just to even do that. Oh my God. Um, it was shipped internationally and you know, apparently Come to find out, the insurance that I usually put on my packaging only counts while it's in this country, which is Costa Rica. Once it crosses the international border, the insurance no longer counts. So they're not going to cover it, which is super annoying. But even worse is, uh, I just it just breaks my heart that this got damaged like that. So, And I don't know that, I, that there's any way, it's cracked, it's ripped, it's torn. I don't think there's any way to save this. So my customer has, and, and friends, they've been waiting since February to get this their piece. I'm going to attempt uh, to redo it. I've warned them that it's almost never the same with fluid art. You make different choices. You um, maybe use different um, uh, materials, different colors, or, you know, the, the temperature is different, the humidity is different, all those, lots of things can affect the, the outcome. So uh, they're aware that it's not going to look exactly like this, but hopefully it will look similar. So um, I'm going to use almost the exact same color. I will link um, uh, on the screen above, I will link the, uh, the original video so you can watch that. Um, I'm not making many changes to what I did initially. Um, so I'm going to put down a base coat which is a mixture of titanium white and iridescent silver. Um, this is mixed to a very thin consistency. I mixed this yesterday. It looks like it's separated a little bit. And I might need to thin that down a little bit again. Yes, I'm gonna thin that down a little bit before I get started. But this will be my base coat. It's a nice silvery, uh, light silver color. Um, and it is a, will be a thinner consistency than the rest of my paints and I will show you, instead of going up to the camera, I'm just gonna do it from here. This is a nice medium consistency on a scale of one to five with one being almost like water and uh, five being, you know, a ring pour or something of a very thick consistency. This would be a three. So right in the middle, it does leave a mound on a mound when it comes off of the stick, but it fades away fairly quickly. And the, when you drizzle it in a circle, uh, the, um, trace goes away within two or three seconds. So um, this is the consistency of all of my paints. I have uh, titanium white from Amsterdam. I have primary yellow from Amsterdam. I have permanent green from Amsterdam. I have turquoise green from Amsterdam. This is cyan blue from Amsterdam. This is the only one that I've made a little bit of a change. I was almost out, I had just enough uh, permanent blue violet uh, to get about two ounces of mixed paint. So I added in some leftovers that I had of uh, this little piggy pigments uh, in Constellation, which is a beautiful metallic uh, blue violet. So uh, I hope I have enough of it there. Uh, then I have Liquitex Basics Deep Violet. I have Amsterdam Carmine Red and I have Amsterdam Vermilion for my orange. So uh, I'm going to use a, once I put down my base coat, I will use a string to find the center. And then I will use this little glass dome left over from a ceiling light uh, to create the circle that I will be um, working with. So I'll just use, dip that in, it'll create a little circle for, as a guide. And, um, uh, and then I'll layer my colors two at a time. Should be eight puddles around. Um, I layer them out. I will blow those out using my mouth, hopefully getting lots of splatters. And then once that's blown out, I will do a second smaller ring on the inside, blow that out. And then I will do a balloon dip in the middle, just like I did in the first one. And then I will spin the whole thing out. So that's the process and that's the technique. 
let's hope, keep, my, keep your fingers crossed for me that I can get a very similar result because I really, really loved that first one. So here we go.
here we have the dry result. I, you know, stand corrected. This is now my favorite. <laughs> it's beautiful. Wow, I'm kind of happy that I did this a second time. The, um, the center on this is just spectacular. That is an amazing um, flick and spin. I'm so happy with it. And the blowout behind it, the gradient of color is gorgeous. Look how dark that purple dried. Um, there's not much negative space left. That's the one thing that's the biggest difference between them. Uh, besides the center, which turned out better, is that in the first one, I did like the negative space. I liked having that. This one covers a lot more of the canvas, but I think it's gorgeous. I'm super happy with it. I know my client is too, and um, so we're gonna let this cure before we ship it off to him. Uh, but thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this too. Stay tuned for this Saturday is Nate's Art Lab collab. We have a fantastic premiere train for you um, on Saturday. I'll post the playlist in my community tab. Um, this uh, month, July, was all about negative space. So um, I, I've already seen some of the, uh, the pieces that'll be coming out in this train and it's gonna knock your socks off. Amazing work that everybody has done. I'm so proud of everybody. And um, I'm really happy with my piece too. So I hope you come back and watch it and join us um, on Saturday. And um, give me a thumbs up on this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you'd like to see more and come back and see me sometime.